But never I say my pen dream TV. Pen dream TV there. I see them. Yopo. Me ma wa kwa ba edi ba pen dream TV. So make sure say obe subscribe to channel. No no click the bell. So say the the news to our on subscribe to me. I can in terms of what the affair. So make sure say obe like it. Now nah, what comment? No one share. I'm a full frost on Saka. Now comment session. How so? No person watch it. I'm a bit to me. I do. I do. I'm sure. I to hold on. Now man for so. I'm a bit kind kind. Now only say pen dream TV there. Any in some way of course. We're gonna be politics. We money. I do. But I'm Saka. I'm not the abroad. Tina so. Me video. I'm Saka. I person no check. I'm not the abroad. Until. Me one more day. I'm sure. So be here video. We. I'm gonna see you here. Now watch it. I'm a bit. comment session. I see. But you see, Randy, I'm learning for the first time that the meeting at which His Excellency President Nanado Dankwa Kufado was informed of the choice was by Zoom. Wow. Yeah, he was out of the country. And, and he could not be briefed before he left the country. He could not <coughs> be removed after his return. It had to be by Zoom. Maybe that was the formal meeting. Yeah, but then there must be compelling reasons why such an important meeting is conducted by Zoom. You understand? And I don't know why, but I'd like to find out a lot more detail about how such an important meeting of informing His Excellency the President about Dr. Baumia's choice was done by Zoom. That's why. Now, I've been told, and Eric, please correct me if I'm wrong, that the Baumia campaign did not release a statement about this meeting, did yes. not put this, this information in the public domain. Yes. I'm also aware of the fact that the Jubilee House, the Flagstaff House, did not issue a statement on this matter. And yet, I mean, the following day or two, this matter was on all the front pages. And in fact, many of the reports in the different newspapers were identical. So it does suggest to me that somebody deliberately put out this information. Now, what was the motive? Whoever put out this information, did he have the authority of the presidential candidate campaign? Did he have the authority of the president himself, and so on. But you see, Randy, I read those reports very carefully. And I suspect that there was some mischief involved in that report. Even graphic, daily graphic, mm -hmm. reported that when the president was informed, mm -hmm. he spoke his mind. And, and that is repeated in many of the reports, that the president spoke his mind and eventually accepted the nomination. Unless my English teacher was so horrible. So, from this reading of what was put out, it does appear that there was some hesitation on the part of the president. He didn't readily accept the nomination. He spoke his mind and eventually came to accept the nomination. That is the language which is used in the report. And it makes me a bit, you know, queasy, you know, queasy. What, what really happened? When the president spoke his mind, what did he speak to? And how did he eventually, eventually, the operative word there is eventually, how did he eventually come to accept the nomination? Now, be that as it may, we were also told that all the major stakeholders had been consulted at the time that the announcement was made. Okay. That is also being contested now. And I've read the statement made by the Honorable, what is his name? Apia Kubi. Kubi. You understand? I've read the statement he made. I've actually listened to him directly and so on. And one of the things he says is that the parliamentary caucus had not been consulted at the time the announcement was made. <coughs> it's pretty but, obvious. But it's, 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 it's pretty obvious. The announcement was made. The announcement was made. By who? 
You would know. Why no, but, 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 you but, no announcement was made. There were news reportage. Who put that? that in but the that news? we can't. But I mean, Brandy is here. He's, a, he's, a, he's like a, a renowned media person. Mm -hmm. These things get out. You know, so they I'm didn't saying, just get no, out. No, but what I mean is that you know, Eric, it wasn't. There was no official announcement from anybody. But there was this, an announcement by who? You should know. I wasn't at that meeting. Exactly. I couldn't tell you. Yeah, no, but uh, <laughs> it must be somebody who was privy to the unimpeachable meeting. sources. <laughs> <laughs> but you see, for me, the key thing is that at least three newspapers use the same word <coughs> to describe what had happened, which would suggest that there was a syndication. That's correct. Which would suggest that there was a syndication. Now, whoever masterminded that syndication must have been privy to the meeting, must have known what happened in the meeting. And whoever released that statement uh, clearly wanted to do some mischief. This line about the president spoke his mind and eventually came to accept the nomination. It's not very positive, is it? It shows that the president had misgivings about the candidate. Okay, so whoever did that had a motive. Whoever did that was subversive of the process. Huh? Whoever did that aimed at angering people like Honorable and the Apiakumi, whose main point was that there could not have been wide consultations when the parliamentary caucus had not been consulted. You know. And then he goes on to make another very interesting point. He says, look, he's a parliamentary candidate. And he cannot see how hmm, the vice presidential candidate nominated can come to his constituency and lift his hand. Why? He's the one who would know, Randy. The suggestion is that there is some very bad blood between him and the presidential candidate. And indeed, he also gave the impression that he was not just speaking for himself, but he was speaking for other parliamentary candidates. Now, that is interesting, given the fact that uh, Napo himself mm -hmm. is a member of the majority caucus in parliament. So if the indication is that there are some members of the majority caucus who are so unhappy with him, what did he do to them? How did he so unruffle them as to make them come out and publicly denounce his selection? That's a matter that you and I may not know. Okay? We may not know, never know. So. Now, there are also some things which are exceedingly worrying. I mean, yesterday, we saw photographs of the candidate. His Excellency Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, Napo himself, and my good friend Wuntu. And the story is that the president, the presidential candidate, has solved their differences and brought them together. What is happening here? First and foremost, one of the reasons why supporters of Napo have been most strident. Uh, in pushing him forward, it's their claim, which I don't support anyway, that Napo comes from the Ashanti region, is an Ashanti royal, and is likely to mobilize Ashanti behind the presidential candidate chair of His Excellency Dr. Mahmoud Baumia. Now, now, from what Andi Apiakubi is, is saying, it does give the impression that Ashanti is not united behind him. From the picture and story which was carried by most newspapers yesterday about the presidential candidate patching differences between the regional chairperson, not an ordinary person, and Napo. So how then can we sustain the assumption that he's the candidate to rally Ashanti behind the presidential candidate? I don't know. Okay. Now, there are other statements which are also worthy of note, and one which Randy just referred to, and I think that's most important. Statements about the 
That's the 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 the, the general. How do I say? It? I'm lost for words. I wish you could help me. You know, but about about his candor, about his public relations, and so. So you mean, you mean Napu? Of course. Okay. I mean statements. I mean, if you listen to Che Mensa Bosu's comment about the pre the presidential candidate having to choose somebody whose words are weighted before they are altered and so on. It does create a certain impression. Okay. What he said was that the, the presidential candidate does not need an arrogant and hot headed person. Yeah, exactly what I'm trying to say. You know, and I was I was lost for words, for appropriate words. So Randy, thank you very much for helping me out, you know. But then that's an issue. Because, look, we have five months to an election. And one statement from a running mate can completely wreck the campaign. Just one statement can completely wreck the campaign. Now, since news of this apparent nomination came up, I've seen what is being done on social media, and I have a very strong suspicion that what is being done on social media is mainly instigated or done by NDC propaganda. But it's still important. What is happening? They've gone back five, six years and reproduced videos of the nominee and the things he has said, and they are pasting them all over the place. And some of those videos are worrying. I mean, for example, there's a video of him saying that if government earmark funds for the construction of the Kitasi defense project, it will mobilize Ashantis to go and protest. Wow. That is something out of this world. And there are many other videos. You know, I don't want to repeat all the things which is heard in those videos say. Of course, there's the most recent one about doom so and so. So this raises substantial questions. Now, the other issue which, which Eric raised, and I fully agree with Eric, has to do with how compatible the running mate is with the presidential candidate. And if for nothing at all, we can always refer to the relationship that existed between Mr. Jerry John Rawlings and his vice president called Nkensen Aka. And that is why the choice to a very large extent ought to be the choice of the presidential candidate. He has to decide who he's comfortable with. He has to decide who he's likely to work with in, 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 in a smooth, you know, administration and so on. Otherwise, you are likely to have some of these things which have happened in the past. Do your care. You understand? So that's very important. To that extent, I would insist that to the extent that it is possible, Dr. Mahmoud Baumia should be given some kind of a free hand to choose his running mate. If it doesn't work, it will be upon his own head. If it works, perhaps Ghana will become the beneficiary. Are you, are you suggesting that this choice is not his choice? Well, I am speaking very, very carefully. Mm -hmm. You understand? Because I know that there have been all kinds of influences. I know, for example, that uh, my sister, I think your real cousin, mm -hmm. Natoshi, mm -hmm. had a lot of support from the women's lobby and also from the clergy, the Christian clergy. And so, and all of them mounted substantial pressure on the vice president. Okay. I also do know of the Minister for Education, who I think is a very nice gentleman. I've had to deal with him on a couple of occasions. Um, I was amazed at his general honesty, you know, admits when there are problems, 
makes concessions when he has to make and so on. He was also highly canvassed for. And again, I had the privilege of interviewing him on, on, on talk time, okay? And I asked him directly if, if he would accept the position. And from the answer he gave, it was obvious mm. that he would embrace the position, not just with both arms, but also with his legs. Mm. You know, I, I got that impression. There were many others, like the chief of staff, you know, and the canvassing for the chief of staff actually went beyond a certain limit. I mean, I was really fascinated when I saw the song which had been composed. <laughs> you know, I mean, I was really fascinated by that. What? They composed the song. And in the, in the, in the video, accompanying the song, in the video, yes. his, her dancing was, wow, excellent. I didn't know she was such a good dancer. I mean, wriggling her waist to the floor and, and, and so on. I mean, it was really amazing. And, and many others. Okay, so the presidential candidate has come under considerable um, influence. There are many people who try to lobby him and so on. And I want to hope that this decision is his own decision. 